Good day, folks. Welcome to the MB Wildman channel. On today's video, we're going to talk real quickly about five key points, key things that people should and often do. Uh, they should remember, but they often forget uh, when they're setting up a, a deer spot and when they're using trail cameras. Um, I'm by no means an expert at running trail cameras or I don't know you know, all the things to do all the time. I can just tell you what I've learned from some experience. I run usually between nine and 12 cameras a year and I rotate around some different spots and whatnot, but there's some mistakes that I've made in the past, you know, while uh, of, of setting up deer spots and using trail cameras. And I'd just like to share some of those with you today and hopefully you can not make those mistakes and it'll save you some time and maybe get to you, maybe get you that deer a year quicker or a month quicker or a week quicker or whatever it might happen to be, right? So. Anyway, listen, if you haven't yet subscribed to the MB Wildman channel, we sure would appreciate it. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. It's completely free. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. We're, uh, right now, we're a little just shy of 11,000 subscribers. We're really pushing hard to get 20,000 subs. I know we're a small channel right now, but uh, it'd be great to have 20,000 subscribers. So we would appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Uh, if you want to get notified when we upload new content, just hit that bell, and you'll get a message when you get a new video from the MB Wildman channel. So anyway, all right, here we go. So we've got five key things to remember. Um, that sometimes you forget, but here's, here's just my, my five things that I always try to think of when I'm setting up a new spot for deer uh, or moose or whatever it might be, uh, and I'm running my trail cameras. So the first thing is you need to pick a site that, um, that has water. Now, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't, but right there, uh, just through the woods, just about as far as the end of my finger is, might be, it might be 30 yards, but I doubt it, maybe 20 yards from where I'm sitting, uh, there's a stream, a little stream about that wide. Not big, doesn't have to be a, <clears throat> a big bunch of water, it doesn't have to be a lake or a pond or anything like that. It's about that much water that just flows down through. And I'm actually, this, this stretch of woods that I'm in, uh, it actually is the water boundary. So here in New Brunswick, uh, woods operations have to leave a buffer. So a certain amount of trees on each side of a, of a stream where they can't cut. So you'll notice that through the woods, there's some opening over there, that's an old cut quite a bit maybe a hundred yards that way. And then on that side of me right over there, um, and it would be the same distance, maybe 30 yards, uh, is the edge of a newer cut. Um, it might be three, four years old, that new cut. So what I'm in is I'm in that, that boundary area. What you wanna remember when you're putting out mineral uh, for deer is that it goes along with water. If they are close to a water source, then they will use your mineral uh, more often. Um, they'll visit it more often it's just because they can they can use the mineral they can use the salt and then they've got the water handy as well they don't have to travel um they don't have to travel back and forth between the mineral and the water and the mineral and the water right so you'll get deer here more and you'll get deer here longer uh if you if you set up near water so it is important uh that you that you set up your spot i always look for a place that's got some water handy not you don't want to set it up too close to the water because you don't want the wetness of the stream in the, in the spring or, or if you get a big rain and the water comes up, you don't want the wetness to wash away your minerals and wash away your salt. So again, you want to stay 20, 25 yards uh, off the water, um, depending on the type of soil that you're dealing with and whatnot is, is really important. I could have set up on the other side of this cut, which is 300-ish yards that way. Um, but there's no water over there. So they're going to be traveling the water source anyway. So they also will pick it up quicker and it's a better chance to find them. Okay. So number one is have your site near, near water. I get people ask all the time. I can't get deer to come to my site. I mean, I just have the odd deer here and there. Well, where, you know, where are you set up? Well, I'm in the middle of a big cut. There should be deer everywhere. But if you're in the middle of a big cut and there's no water, like deer are skirting the edges and they're usually skirting the edge where the water is, if there is water. Okay. So water is important. Man, that bug is going to drive me crazy. Just one little bug right there. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's making me, making me nuts. Uh, anyway, okay, so number one is water. Number two, you want to think about the longevity of your mineral. You don't want to be in here every other day having to refresh the stuff or, or make it, you know, better or whatever. So you need to pick an area that's got a, a, a stump or some, a rotten stump or some rotten wood or, or something in it that you can pour your mineral on, pour your mixture on, that as it soaks in, it, 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 it gets absorbed by that stump, okay? And that will, that will leave it there for a long time. It'll cause the deer and the moose to dig and continue to, to visit the site because they can't just get it all at the same time. So you can see here, I've selected this area. This old, old, this looks like yellow birch to me, right? So this is an old, old yellow birch. There's a big, big maple right beside it, okay? So that's gonna give me a great kind of break up, right? Um, 
you want to make sure that you've got something that you can pour your mineral on. If you select a site that's got, you know, the, the sign that you want and the water that you want and whatnot, and there's nothing to, to get your mineral to be longevity, to get it, let it soak into, move stuff into the area. Run around, find yourself some old, dead, rotting, uh, this stuff, old, dead, you know, rotting, spongy type wood, and bring it in and make yourself a little pile. Not like two cord, but a little pile that will that you can dump your mineral on that it can soak into you will find that deer and moose chew this eat it lick it they'll gobble it right up and it, th by this time next year this will be completely down to dirt and they'll be eating away at the roots and stuff okay so it's really important that you have a way to hold your mineral okay so number one is water number two is a way to hold your mineral okay so the next thing that you want to look at is you want to look at sun now, I know you're thinking, what does sun have to do with whether how deer or moose come to a spot or whatever? It doesn't. But what it does have to do with is as you set your trail camera, are you going to get quality pictures? So um, you and I both know, uh, or I hope you know, that by now most of the deer uh, or moose, especially in areas where there aren't a lot of them, you, they travel by early morning, they travel by, by evening and late and sometimes at night. So, or a lot of times at night, I guess, too. But you're going to get that feeding pattern, um, hopefully is you want to you want to be in that early morning stretch or that that evening stretch so if you think about it sun rises in the east and sets in the west if you get your camera set up so that your 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 mineral is in one spot but your camera is facing either east or west you're going to end up with a lot of pictures in the in the prime time for deer that you really want to be looking at deer and you're going to get sun pictures you're going to get glare of the sunshine you're going to get you know those rainy days or those early mornings where the dew is just coming up and it's beautiful and there's a massive big buck at your spot and all you got is a blob of body and then like bright flash of camera because there's no you're getting the sun right when it takes a picture and you can have sun interference depending on you know the lay of the land the topography you can have sun interference for as much as as an hour and a half right so even right through that prime time a perfect time for deer to be coming to your spot or moose to be coming to your spot and you get junky pictures and if you go the other way and it's right at sunset right as soon as the sun gets you know that at that o'clock in the sky the, all your pictures are sunshine some cameras too, I know I've got two cell cameras in particular, that the sun, if it's in direct, like if it's looking right at the lens, the, the IR sensor, sometimes the sun in conjunction with just a little tiny bit of moisture will set it off. You get a bunch of pictures of just like dew and, and nice misty stuff. It's a beautiful picture uh, of nothing. So I don't know, you know, depending on how your, your, your setups work. So uh, you wanna make sure uh, that your camera is, is not pointed east or west. Uh, so you gotta look at your setup so that you, can make sure that you can have your camera on a tree pointing in a direction that isn't going to give you a lot of sun okay so we've covered sun we've covered water uh, we've covered the longevity right so makes make your mineral last um, now we're going to talk about wind wind like who cares it's a camera you're not here it's not like scent no it's not about scent at all what it's about is coming in and getting all excited because you get 800 pictures after two weeks and you're thinking, oh, wow, I got all kinds of activity in this spot. This is great. And you get home and 791 of them are wind pictures and the other nine are you setting the camera up and taking the camera down. Okay. So what we have to look at is if you look around this area, okay, see this little twig right here? I'll get out of your way. See this little twig right here? Okay. So if my camera was going to be over on that tree, it's not. But if it was going to be on that tree and I'm looking over here, right, this has to go. Okay. You also have to understand, depending on when you put your cameras out, and I've made this mistake a bunch of times. I get all excited. I go in early in the spring, and I get my camera all set up. It's a perfect area. Everything looks good. I leave it for four weeks or five weeks or six weeks, and I'm thinking, I'm going to go back there, and it's going to be perfect. I go back in, and the ferns or the growth is up a foot and a half. And now my camera has just got bunches and bunches and bunches of pictures of wind. They're all wind pictures. It's not good. So what you have to consider too when you set up your camera is you consider the wind and what's going to move when the wind blows. Is this little tree right here? Is this going to wiggle around, right? And is it going to tr trigger your IR sensor? Some cameras are better than others. Some cameras have to do with heat as well as motion. But let's face it, for the most part, our cameras, if a wind blows a leaf back and forth like this, it's going to trigger the camera. Okay, so you're going to get a lot of wind pictures if you don't pay attention and if you don't actually clip some of the things that it might take to, to trigger your camera. Okay, so you got sun, you got wind, you got water, you got longevity, so something to soak your mineral into. Okay, so there's four big things. The other thing is you got to know your camera. 
I have one, two, three different types of cameras that I run. I love my Browning micro cams. I can't say enough good about them. I've also got a couple of Bushnell cameras and I've got a new wild game, something, something that I bought at Canadian Tire. I don't love it, uh, but I do use it out on the, out on the trail. Um, every single camera triggers differently and takes quality photos at a different length from its target, okay? Uh, my Browning cameras will pick up, uh, pick up stuff I can barely see back in the growth and right, you just get a flash of something and like, what on earth was that? It's just like a little blob way, way back, right? So 80, 90 feet out. Okay, but it also takes pictures. Uh, it seems like it takes pictures farther out. My Bushnell cameras, I, I feel like I gotta set my cameras right on top of my mineral in order to get good quality pictures and it doesn't take them as far out. So you need to know your camera and, and figure out just how far from your mineral, from your spot, are you gonna set it up and take a look at, uh, at what gives you the quality photo because that's gonna determine where you, what tree you place your camera on in order to get good quality photos of deer and moose approaching your area. Okay, so there's my camera and my stump both in the same picture. And yours may be different. It's just a matter of getting to know your camera and where it takes the best photos from, the distance. All right, guys and gals, I hope this is something that can help you out and that, you know, you can take some of the mistakes that I've made over the years and maybe make your sights a little better, maybe it'll be a little easier for you. Hope you get that deer a year quicker or whatever it might be. So until next time, happy hunting from the MB Wildman channel.